Hey guys, it's been a minute since we've done a how to make a wig tutorial. So today we're going to be doing just that. Grab your popcorn or your snacks, your notepad and pen and get ready to take notes. So let's talk about the items you'll need. You'll need a canvas blockhead. I ordered mine specifically to my head size. This one is 22 inches. Also, you're going to need a wig cap to sew on. Normally, I go with these from Amazon, either mesh or spandex. Today, I'm going to opt for the mesh one, which is a little bit more breathable, and it actually fits my head a little bit better. As you notice, I have four T-pins in there. I'll have those linked down below, but those act as like your third hand when you need to pin a piece of hair down or a bundle down or a frontal down. Um, in order to sew. You're going to need your needle and thread. I personally love nylon thread. You may need a comb and or a brush and some clips just to help you along the way. Here are my four bundles of curly hair. I have two 20s, an 18 and a 16. We're going to put the 16 aside and just go with three bundles today and I used all three um, of the bundles completely. Here is a quick clip of how the hair looks. Definitely a gorgeous curl pattern. It's going to look even better once we co-wash it. Here is the frontal. I went ahead and bleached the knots on this one for a more flawless look. And of course because that I washed and conditioned it and this is what the hair is going to look like once we wash and condition those as well. So first off, I took the um, mesh dome cap, I put it on my head, and I kind of marked where the front of my ear sits with a white little pencil. And I'm going to line it up with the frontal. I want to make sure that the frontal is going to sit in the center of my head where I want it to. And kind of just mark where um, it falls to hit my ear. As you guys know, most frontals are too big for your head by maybe an inch or two. So you want to make sure that you use a guide to know how to go ahead and lay it on. So I put the the um, cap back onto the wig head and that's pretty much where my ear is going to sit. I'm going to use two T-pins to line it up perfectly. Once it's lined up perfectly, you're going to go ahead and pull the center or the front of the frontal down to also match where you would want it to sit. Now if you've watched previous tutorials, this is the first time I've done this technique on um, this channel and it's actually the first time I've done it in real life ever. I've gotten this from YouTube, not sure or remember who I've seen do this, but I've seen quite a few creators do this in the past. Now that you've done that, it's just as important to make sure that the center of the frontal lines up as I said before so go ahead and pin the hair up and move it out of the way you can braid it or do whatever you want to it just make sure it's out of the way and then how I kind of do it is I line up the front center of the frontal perfectly to the front of the cap and then I go a little ways in front kind of like imagine how much hair you want to be baby hair and leave that much of the frontal in front and then I'll use a t-pin to secure it um, in the back and that's pretty much all you need to do as far as placing your frontal. Here I use a T-pin and put it in the center. And you guys see how it makes this funky like M or um, however you want to say it. You kind of want to see that. That lets you know that it is laying right. If your frontal is laying perfectly flat in the front or it does not have that M, chances are it's not going to lay right and fit right when you put the wig on and it probably will bulk up like when you try to part it um just a tip again you can go back to old videos that i've done before and i definitely um have just done the white um crayon um technique for the first time normally i guide how i showed you guys how to um, place it a little ways in the front normally i start there and then i just let it lay where it lays in the back Hopefully that makes sense. Again, I'll put previous tutorials up if you guys want to see those. Now, as you guys can see, I'm going through and I am just sewing my frontal down. Now, I'm not an expert with sewing. I've done this a million times yet still. I'm not an expert, but you guys can see here, I mess up. I kind of, you know, the thread will buckle on me sometimes, just like everyone else. And I am definitely not perfect. The goal is just to sew it down. Because it's already laying down with those T-pins, you don't need to move anything. You already have your guide there. Literally just sew from one side to another and make sure that you secure it down by tying it really really tight and knotting it up really good you guys see here my um, thread buckled on me I just used the pointy side of the needle to kind of unbuckle it and fix it before it detangled too bad and I got it through now we're going to go ahead and work on the tracks. So again, we have two 20-inch bundles um, and one 18, and you're going to see exactly how I 
sew these down now normally I go ahead and I um, use hot glue sewing is a long-term method of being able to make sure that your wig is flawless flat um, and it just lasts so I'm just gonna go ear to ear um, I put it I, I measured the track to go as low or as far, far down on the cap as possible and I'm just gonna sew it ear to ear now what's special about what I did today is I doubled my tracks this is also something that I'm doing for the first time on um, my channel what I find is that you double your tracks in the back and then when you get to the top you single them so that it's still a very flat um, wig but you want to double your tracks um, if you really like a really nice full and voluminous um, wig the best way to get it done is to double your tracks this also makes the process go faster if you want to do three bundles on a wig and you're sewing each track individually it's going to take much longer than if you double majority of those tracks hopefully that makes sense if you stick around you'll see exactly how I double my tracks when I unravel the bundles um, all that's here so before you ask any questions in the comments be sure to just follow along and watch the entire video because certain things will be explained in different parts of the video but here you can see the tracks are doubled now I didn't match up two bundles this is just one bundle folded in half but like I said I'll show you in a, in a bit um, exactly how that looks because I know a lot of you always have a lot of questions so I don't know if you noticed there but I used a really really long piece of thread so when I got to the end of that track I did cut my weft and I did make sure it was knotted so that um, it wouldn't move the end of that track wouldn't move at all but instead of cutting that needle and thread out I just kind of moved the stitch up to the next row and proceeded to um, so the next track going the opposite way again this is something that you're gonna see me do with every track so you'll be able to see that in a few now because this was a um, pre-sewn needle and thread and basically this is the only needle and thread I've used since I started sewing my bundles I did run out um, before I finished this track and you can see here all I did was I went ahead and stopped it right there I knotted it and make sure that it wasn't gonna move and it's super tight I'm going to go ahead and cut the needle off the thread and I'm also going to um, tie it I think like three times and the reason I do this is because I just want this wig to work forever. I don't want to have to worry about any track ever coming up so when it comes to securing and tying each um, thread that like when it my needle and thread ends I just make sure I tie it for dear life so that it never ever comes out. Also, the way you hold your um, two bundles when you're doubling is you really, really, really want to pay attention and make sure that you can see both bundles. In the past, I've definitely made that mistake of thinking I had both bundles in my hand and one slipping and sewing literally an entire, um, you know, row and finding out after the fact that I was not even sewing the bundle behind. I was only sewing one bundle. If that happens to you, just go ahead and continue um, and try to like reincorporate or reinstate that second bundle in and then going back after the fact and sewing that bundle that is loose underneath or that track that is loose underneath down, if that makes any sense. Just don't have any loose bundles hanging, but instead of going back and like cutting that um, needle and thread out, just sew on top of it so that everything is sewn and laying flat. Hopefully that makes sense. So you guys see here, I did not um, cut that needle and thread out. I just went ahead and stitched it to go upwards so that it can continue to go. Another bonus to not always necessarily cutting your needle and thread at the end of every track is if your um, tracks do come up like in the future it's more than likely going to come up at the very end of the row or the end of that track and because the end of that track is connected to the bottom through that needle and thread you won't have to worry about that and it also cuts down on time like if you cut the end um, or the needle and thread at the end of every track and you have to retie the knot and all that it just makes for more work in my opinion but this is just something that I'm comfortable doing and used to doing if it doesn't make sense just do it you know how you choose to do it so here we are again I've gotten to the end of a track 
and I still have a little bit of thread left but as you guys can see I don't have a whole lot this is one of those cases where I could go up and just sew up and start the next track without cutting but it wouldn't make sense because I wouldn't get too far now you guys can see I'm coming to the end of the road with this particular um, bundle and you can see it's folded in half if there's not two separate bundles there literally it's just one bundle folded in half and I'm going row to row to row to row and just cutting each track as I finish a section now I always like to check my work here I am just making sure that everything sits and lays flat um, there are no um, bundles left behind everything is so nice and flat and neat and we're gonna go on to our second bundle of 20 inch here I am unraveling it and when I unraveled it I went ahead and held that one end that is um, has two pieces I kind of hold it together but on the very other end it's folded in half so I didn't cut that bundle I just unraveled it and made it fold in half and I'm just gonna proceed to just you know sew it on but you don't have to cut the bundle in half to make or to double your wefts if that makes any sense so another question I get often is, or a thing that people don't understand, is how to lay your bundles. As you guys see from the very beginning, I just started as furthest down below on the cap as I could, and I went from ear to ear. With each track you lay, you just lay it and you follow the same guide of what was there before and go from ear to ear. As you get closer to the top, it starts to form a U. That U, if you just go back and rewatch everything, even on mute, and just literally watch how the pattern develops, as you get further, I'm sorry, higher and higher up, it creates a U naturally. So a lot of the times I'll clip, um, I'll like cut clips out just for the sake of making sure that the video is not too long. And a lot of you will be so angry and think that I did some kind of smoke and mirrors and created some kind of random pattern and literally it's like you keep sewing a track on you keep sewing a track on and it creates a you on its own I never ever ever created a pattern or anything weird and you continue that you all the way up until you can't anymore or not even that you can't even more but when the you becomes a little bit more like a horseshoe or a true you you kind of want to start going straight across at that point because you don't want it to be a true like super tight you way up to the center because then it won't lay flat hopefully that makes sense but you can kind of see as a guide where I um, started going straight across here now here this is gonna be my first bundle that goes straight across if you want to milk it and continue to go in that U shape you could have went from ear to ear um, I'm sorry from one side to the other and created the U more but again because I'm going to be doing straight across up top I don't want the U to get too small and then I'm sewing these small or short tracks across little by little hopefully that makes sense just kind of use it as a guide um, and kind of go with the flow with what makes you feel best but you guys can see here that um, I'm just going straight across because I'm finishing off that bundle of 20 inch I decided to just still double that track now we're going to go on to our 80 inch bundle and this is where we're going to begin to single. So when you start going straight across, it's a good idea to start there going single um, wefts opposed to doubling your wefts. And it also may be, may be a great idea for your last U-shaped um, track that goes across. You can also single that just for the most flat application. But again, I went ahead and I doubled all the bundles that go um, all the way across like in that U-shape. And then I'm going to single all the bundles that go straight across in the very center. Again, it's all about trial and error and what you feel comfortable with. If there's something that I'm saying that you've seen someone else do that or that contradicts something that you've seen someone else do, go with what makes you feel comfortable. Just make sure to always step back and check your work and make sure that everything is looking you know, good and everything is laying flat and it is making sense. 
but eventually um, you know once you get to the very top everything will make sense as far as my stitching I don't do any special sip, uh, uh, stitching I literally just loop it and sew it loop it and sew it just to get through it but I honestly don't do any special um, looping if you sew a track across and there's a little piece left be sure to cut that little piece off so that it's not overlapping and you know creating a lumpy um, wig when it's all said and done also how you space your tracks is all about what you feel comfortable with and more importantly how many bundles you have normally if I'm gonna sew a wig or make a wig in general I just like to have four bundles to be safe when I single my tracks I normally on average do about two to two and a half bundles and then a frontal but when I double my tracks I always get at least three bundles I can do it a little bit tighter and get maybe like three and a half bundles but I kind of feel like when I get to the four bundle mark the wig becomes a little bit too you you know thick and too dense for my liking but again it's all about preference and you know knowing what is gonna look good on you and your face shape and you know your style and preference so we are coming to the home stretch and we're still working on that third 18 inch bundle um, at this point when I get to do these straight across tracks a lot of times I'll pre measure how much I'll need and cut um, the excess off and sew straight across I'm pretty sure you've seen throughout this video that I did when I started going straight across use that t-pin um, as like a third hand so I start the stitch on one side I'll hold it down on the opposite side I'll grab that t-pin and secure it on the other the other side that way I can just sew and it's held down super flat and in place where I want it to um, lay because a lot of times when you're ho holding the track and you're sewing you're moving so fast that you don't even realize that you're sewing in an angle and it's not straight it may be flat but it may not be straight whereas if you you know pin it down with that T pin it's going exactly where you want it to go and then when you get to the very end where that T pin is you just take it off and proceed to sew but again you have kind of like a third hand so to speak helping you to keep everything uniform and neat and you know exactly where it needs to be now we're at the home stretch and I have my final bundle that I'm sewing. Miraculously, this is literally the last piece of that 18 inch third bundle. So I was afraid I was going to have to open up the fourth bundle just to only take out one little piece for one track, which I hate doing because it's almost like it's a waste, but I did not have to. So normally I loop around, I sew through the very beginning and very end of the track and in between I loop around, but for that final track I did sew through the entire track. And this is the finished result. As you guys can see, it's a very choppy layer. I'm going to go ahead and custom layer it and take off about an inch or two at the bottom to make it look a little bit more neat and flawless. But overall, the wig came out amazing. It's super flat. Everything came out exactly how I wanted it to. It took me about three hours. Honestly, this is my first time sewing a wig in about a year. It's been so long. Normally, I do the hot glue gun method, which takes me about 45 minutes. And I'll link a tutorial down below on how I do that. Again, I bleached the knots and um, washed and conditioned the hair or the frontal off camera. So you guys can get a sneak peek and see this is what the texture of um, the hair looks like once you co-wash versus the bundles, which have not been touched yet but again off camera I am gonna go ahead and co-wash it so that everything matches and looks amazing and it's clean so remember you did lay the frontal on top of that dome cap you have to go ahead and pull that back and cut off the excess or else the wig will not fit nice there's no way around it you cannot leave that cap there but if you are using a mesh dome cap as I did you can cut off the mesh the excess mesh and clean up around the ends and guess what you have an elastic band to do the elastic band on this wig built right in. If you use a spandex dome cap or any other kind of dome cap, you won't be able to have that piece, but it definitely will come in handy. And then this is a live image of my work. So you guys can see um, all that there is basically all the needle and thread or the thread that you, st you stitched all the way around and it came out amazing. So now I'll show you guys the final results after the install. Okay, so last time you guys seen this wig, it was literally on the mannequin head, super curly and big in its natural state. Off camera, I went ahead and co-washed it with um, the Hello Hydrations 
conditioner in the blue bottle. Um, I used a Tangle Teaser style brush to kind of like rake through and um, just comb it out. You guys know I cut my wefts, so kind of pull out, basically when you cut your wefts, um, the ends will kind of shed a little bit more, so I kind of pulled up all the excess shedded hair. Um, let the conditioner sit in there for about 10 minutes, and then I went ahead and installed her. As you guys can tell, I obviously did not do any baby hair. Um, I pretty much did a simple install. I know a lot of you will be like, well, we want to see the process of install. You literally can go to my channel and click any video that says install in the title. And I pretty much do the same technique with the same items as always. So again, this one did come from West Kiss. Um, again, I've worked with this company for so many years. This was, this is definitely one of my day one companies that I've been working with almost since the beginning of my hair journey here on YouTube, like three, four years ago. And um, normally I don't have too many complaints about their hair. This one definitely was perfect and amazing. I'm happy I sewed this one because I don't have a go-to curly wig um, in my stash. And I only like to use like um, actually sewn machine lifted wigs or sewn wigs that I sew myself. Um, as far as like my stash and what I keep um, because I'm, I don't really like to keep the ones that are hot glue um, as much but you guys get the drift um, everything about this wig um, all the details and the link to this wig are listed in the description bar I believe I have some bundle deals from West Kids and maybe even some coupons so make sure you guys check that out again a list of everything that I used to achieve this install are also listed in the description bar um this front so it's definitely super awesome again i did bleach the knots and you guys can see this is pretty much what it looks like without the powder super nice and the knots are bleached so make sure you guys check it out let them know i sent you if you decide to shop thank you guys so much for watching don't forget to like comment subscribe and share this video with your friends and as always i'll see you in the next one